Alright guys, today I'm going to show you how to set up your Dolphin emulator, which is an emulator for the GameCube and the Wii. Here I'm going to click on the shortcut right here, and this window will pop up. This is version 4.0. This is the latest version as of, let's see, March 14th, 2014. Anyways, if we go to config, these are my settings. If you, um, I really suggest that you use dual core. You have this enabled, and you also have this. It'll really help out when you uh, want good performance because it's when you run a GameCube emulator like Dolphin, it's very demanding because you're trying to emulate something that your PC is not because your PC is not a GameCube. That's pretty much the reason why it's very hard for even a PC of my stature to emulate the GameCube on here with the emulator because the fact of the matter is the PC is not a GameCube and it has to do a lot of extra computing power and processing and all that stuff just to even do what a normal GameCube could do. And keep in mind that um, some games are different than others. The most demanding game that you could probably ever play on the Dolphin emulator is Super Mario Galaxy. And never mind Super Mario Galaxy 2. I don't even know if that's even playable. The main reason why is because Dolphin is a very CPU intensive program. So if you don't even have a dual core then don't even bother doing this. And even then, if you have a dual core, make sure it's at least 3.0 gigahertz or higher. And if not, then maybe you can overclock it. At least if you have a desktop. I don't know if you can overclock on a laptop. But also, as we move on right here to a frame limit, it can go all the way to 120, but you leave it on auto mostly. Or you can leave it on off. And here, you just leave it on JIT Recomplier and it's recommended. You don't need to do this. There used to be a uh, another setting right here. I forgot what it was, but it's not needed either. If you're ha if you have an older version of Dolphin, let me go to interface. We just keep all that. Let me go to audio. You keep this because it's fast, and more importantly, it's high-level emulation. So in other words, it's going to emulate the sound at a higher level. But if you don't have a good enough, like, I don't know, like motherboard or sound card or whatever, then maybe you want to click right here. And sometimes you might want to go down here and change the audio back in, but normally it's best to leave it right there at X Audio 2. Because then it starts to get more complicated as you uh, select this, like this one for instance, because then there's the latency, this, 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 all these three options right here. So I'm just going to do that. Then you go to GameCube, make sure you set up your uh, memory card. It'll basically use your uh, like your, uh, your hard drive as a memory card, like right here. This is where my saves are. See, so look, my documents, Dolphin Emulator, GameCube, and then that's where all it goes. As soon as you select it, the memory card, it automatically does it. So, Anyways, I'm going to go to Graphics Setting. Just to let you guys know, there's three... Uh, options you can choose for your graphics right here for the back end you can have OpenGL which is the best uh, option you can use there's direct 3d then there's software renderer OpenGL is the best because it's a, a more opened version I guess you could say like it's easier for the emulator to use because with direct 3d it's almost kind of like a it's almost like it tries to use DirectX that's what I think it does so it's a lot it it takes a toll on your computer basically so you're better off just using OpenGL but at the same time as it says on the text below it says different games will behave differently so and I've been playing as you can see right here like right here if you can see that um, I have two folders right here that says Legend of Zelda Wind Waker and Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess I have both the ISO files in there those are two examples of games that are best used for uh, OpenGL, especially Twilight Princess because it has, you know, enhanced. I guess you could say it has better graphics than Wind Waker, considering that Wind Waker came out in 2003 and then Twilight Princess 2006. This is the GameCube version, by the way, which is the one you want to get because the Wii version is kind of retarded, to be honest. It's, I don't know, I can go on and on about it, but I'm going to go back to the matter at hand, which is the emulator. As you can see, you can change your full screen resolution. It's best to keep your resolution native, as you guys probably 
might know, I have a monitor that's the Asus, I think it's the Asus uh, VH236H monitor. It's 23 inch 1080p display. So obviously I have to choose 1920 by 1080 because that's my native resolution. And then you also want to f either force, you know, one of these or stretch to window depending on what uh, aspect ratio you have. And you also want to have full screen on, that way you can, you know, have it full screen and see the whole damn thing. <laughs> Let me, and then you can also uh, have V-Sync. But normally I'd keep that off because as you can see right here, it decreases performance if emulation speed is below 100%. So if uh, the game starts to slow down, like below like 30 frames per second, then it starts to fuck up a lot. So it's best to keep that unchecked. And also you have other options like show FPS. That's just for, uh, you know, just testing your emulator to see how it runs. You can also just use Fraps, which I'm using to record this video, but you get the idea. And then all this stuff is kind of not really needed except this one, hide mouse cursor. So that way, while you're playing, you don't have this little mouse cursor in the way as you're playing. Now we move on to the next tab, Enhancements. Uh, there's Internal Resolution, Anti-Aliasing, Anostropic, I think I said that right, Filtering, Post-Processing Effect. And this is all, I have all this because I chose OpenGL. If you, have, if you choose the Direct3D, you don't even get this effect, right? I mean, you don't even get this option right here. If we go to internal resolution, it says right here, specifies the resolution used to render at. You can have a high resolution that'll prove the visual quality, but, you know, it can be, have a huge impact on performance. So normally it'll be at one times native. I like to go 1.5 just to get a little bit more out of it. It doesn't stretch the resolution or anything. It just increases the visual. That's all it really does. I mean, technically it does, I guess stretch it somewhat but I mean like the text like let's just say you play a game and you see text it's not gonna look stretched it's not gonna look anything like that it'll just look better as long as you have this all set up the correct way but going back to here anti-aliasing you can go all the way up to this right here which is four times SSAA I don't I forget what that stands for but you're better off just leaving it at two because as it says on the bottom it heavily decreases emulation speed that sometimes causes issues. So you can have a little bit of it just to keep the picture quality good, but if you have too much then it'll start to get a little crazy with the frames per second. And then with the filtering thing, um, I leave it at 4. The default setting is 1, but I leave it at 4 just to... when you look at far away objects it looks just a little bit better. And then I keep this off. And this right here, scaled EFB copy, you leave, leave that box checked. Do not uncheck it. It's very important. Anyways, we go back to, uh, or we go to Hacks tab, and this is already checked on default, so you leave that. And with the EFB copies, you leave that to Textures. With the Texture Cache, you have it to Fast. And you leave the External Frame Buffer at Disable. And you also leave the Fast Depth cap Calculation. And then you go to Advanced, and you can have all this, but I have it all unchecked. And let me see if I missed anything else. Nope. So that's pretty much it. And I also have the GameCube settings. You can actually use like a, a gamepad. I'm actually using an Xbox 360 controller. One thing to note though is that uh, with the C-Stick it's actually inverted. So um, as far as I know, at least with, up, with uh, left and right, you're going to want it to be opposite. So right will mean left, and then left will mean right. And I think it's the same with down, would mean up, and then up would mean down. But other than that, it's pretty much, you know, the same. You know, A button on the Xbox is A. The B button I like to use is X because on the GameCube controller, it's, if you, if you can see it right there, it's on the left side, just like the X button would be on a Xbox 360 controller. So I kind of liked it to mimic the gamepad, I mean the, excuse me, the GameCube controller, so, yeah. Alright guys, that'll be the end of that for this uh, setup video for the Dolphin emulator. I know I didn't really show how to, uh, like, download the emulator and all that, but, you know, that's what Google's for, so. If you have any issues, you can uh, message me or comment on the, the comment section below, 
or you can just search it up on Google or whatever. I mean, lots of people use this emulator, so, you know, if you have an issue, just let your voice be heard, all right? And I think in the next video that I'm going to upload, I'm going to show some Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess and maybe even some Wind Waker gameplay off of the Dolphin emulator, assuming that I can correct the settings, because, you know, each game is pretty much just a little bit different, especially if you play the higher end ones like the Super Mario Galaxy, which I will not play because, like I said, it's a super high end game to play. I don't know why, but it is. But anyways, I'm going to uh, get off my soapbox. <laughs> so I'll see you guys later, okay? See ya.